Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick, my co-host for this segment. We'll be going wall to wall all day today, tomorrow, John Furrier's flying in, uh, Stu Miniman is at the analyst session, David Floyer is here, we got the whole CUBE crew, and we'll be covering Edge. Uh, this is the third year of Edge, as I said, first year was in Orlando, last year was at Mandalay Bay. We got 5,500 or so people this year at Edge, customers, practitioners, partners, analysts, a uh, lot of action going on. Bob Elliott is here, he's the Vice President of Storage at Mainline, an IBM partner. Bob, thanks for coming on theCUBE, good to see you. My pleasure, glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about Mainline, what's your uh, shtick? Mainline is, uh, it, it started out as an IBM partner, we've now uh, brought in other uh, relationships, but it's primarily an IBM partner. We do a uh, large amount of server storage business. Uh, one of the, probably one of the larger IBM uh, storage partners uh, in the entire country, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 180 to 200 million a year in storage. So talk a little bit about what's changing. I mean, you're seeing all this software-defined stuff. Obviously, you went through the whole virtualization trend, which right. was probably an upcycle for, for you guys, uh, but, but maybe it caused some disruptions. You're seeing cloud. That's causing your business to have to you know, change your sort of strategies and add new services. How has the storage business changed for you guys in the last five, seven years? It's changed a lot from just being very hardware specific to probably being a little bit more solution specific. And what I mean by that is, there was a day when I came on board to Mainline six and a half, seven years ago, where we just worried about, okay, are we selling DS8s? Are we selling, uh, at some point, XIVs? Uh, and it's kind of progressed to, uh, customers' cloud strategy is this. How do we, you know, how do we work with them to fulfill their cloud requirements. And it may be with some of the same building blocks that we used in the past, XIV, uh, DSA, V7000, but it's coming from a different angle. It used to be very hardware driven and now it's much more solution driven. So, I mean, you always hear the, it's kind of a pejorative, but box sellers, I, personally I love box sellers because yeah, they yeah. can move <laughs> stuff, but you know, but, but at the same time, the margins are getting squeezed in the business, right? right? There's all kinds of dislocations going on, so you're forced to, to pivot and, and add more value. How do you do that? Is it, is it services? Is it application affinity? A combination? Uh, talk about that. It's a combination of everything. I mean, you hit a key topic there in services. Uh, if you talk about profitability, you're very limited in the profitability of a piece of hardware. When you buy from an IBM and then you resell, there's a certain amount that you can you know, only mark up it, right, Grand, that's your gross profit, sale. right. If you do it too much, the customer's going to back off or they're going to get it from somebody else. Uh, services, there's much more of an you know, open door to, uh, to create your own profitability. So you, we are seeing a big drive, at least within Mainline, but I would expect from other partners are doing the same thing, where they're creating their own services, whether it's anything from migration services to installation to consulting services, you know, a, a vast, uh, you know, uh, plethora of products that you can uh, consult on, you can, you can perform services on, so that you can control somewhat of your own profitability. So, I mean, you're an independent, you can resell whom, whomever you want. Correct. Um, so why IBM? It's, it's a combination of things, it's our heritage. We started out as, a, as an IBM partner. We have a bunch of, uh, the majority of our sales force, uh, I would say probably 50% or greater are former IBMers who have brought their account set over and are now working you know, with those accounts. And they, even though they want to act in a consultative manner, the comfort zone is oftentimes IBM. And, but the third piece is it's a very solid product line that you know, we are very well versed on and we've worked with them for 25 years. Mainline is now 25 years old. So for 25 years, we've been working with IBM. We're very tight with them. We've got good relationships. You know, like I'm a former IBMer. Uh, I know a lot of the, the storage executives here. If I have questions, issues, comments, suggestions, uh, I have a very, you know, very good direct line into IBM at this a point. A lot of connections and yeah. touch points. I want to put, form a, 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 put forth a premise, Bob, and tell me if I'm okay. off base or, or on. 
this notion of sustainable advantage from a product standpoint, it seems to us anyway, and something that Jeff and I talk about all the time, is that in the, in the storage business, it's very hard to, from a product standpoint, standpoint to maintain, for a long term, a, a sustainable advantage. You know, you, have, you saw features like thin provisioning come Absolutely. out. Absolutely. I mean, SVC is actually one that maybe has done a pretty good job, but even that now, others are coming out with, with virtualization engines. So is that a viable premise that it's very hard to, to maintain that sustainable advantage from a product standpoint? If so, how do competitors uh, compete going forward? Well, that, that's uh, it's a very simple question to answer. Um, <laughs> there's, there's multiple pieces to it. The, uh, the sustainable advantage is an issue that I think we, we've seen through, you know, through time. And I'll, I'll allude back to, you know, think back to the old days, and, and I'm storage specific, so I, I'm not going to get into servers or anything like that, but I'll use storage a, as my example. Um, if you think back to the 3390 days when IBM owned that market, and then, you know, I guess Fujitsu and Amdahl both got into that market, and they had slight little tweaks, but it was basically the same product. It wasn't until the early to mid 90s that EMC came out with a product that was laden with cash, that had small disks in arrays, and everyone said, ah, that's not going to work. Well, it changed the whole market, yep. right? And that was the first leapfrog. And then IBM came back, and they leapfrogged that. And then SDK came out with a virtual, the first virtualization product, which was the Iceberg, and then IBM ended up mm -hmm. getting the marketing agreement with the yep. RAMAC, uh, the RVA. So we've seen I'm pretty that. pretty old, I remember all this stuff. You don't look that old, you're good. <laughs> so, so we've seen that over and over again, uh, and now in current, the current environment, we do have what you said, we have a sustainable advantage that I think IBM has in their SVC product, okay, which they've incorporated now into the V7000 product, which is, I think, a huge advantage. And now with the new announcement and the new V7000 product, you're seeing you know, leapfrogs in performance, which is going to take it to another level. Okay, but you still have the, the basic virtualization piece, which is a differentiator from anyone else, along with the real-time compression. So when you put all those together, you've got a product that I think everybody else should be shooting for at this point. Um, but if you look at other components within storage, flash for example, um, we're going to see continually uh, leapfrogging in the flash environment with, you know, with footprint, with speed, with, uh, with price. We've seen the price come down. Uh, so you know, I think it varies based on the component within storage, but you certainly do see uh, companies with a sustainable advantage, but you know, the competition goes out there and they learn from what the other, you know, the other companies have done, and they can build on that. Mm. You know, so. So, slight shift in in, uh, in topic. We, you know, we all came here on the airplanes. Most of us, and all <laughs> over the airports, are big signs saying, you know, the the amount of data is going to double by the time you get to your airplane, and and you know, just this explosion of big data and mobile. Talk a little bit about how that's changed the business, because at the end of the day, it all has to live somewhere. Um, and is the rate of growth in, in the data, your customers, you know, is it really uh, tracking to what we're reading about and how are they accommodating that growth? I think it is. I know personally my own data, if I just think back at my own house with the number of MP3s, photos, and then I've got all the duplications of those things, I'm still waiting for somebody to write their own uh, personal dedupe device for me for my MP3s and photos, but that's another story. Um, but I, I think, that customers are exactly tracking to what we're, we're expecting with the increase in, you know, you think about anytime you text somebody, that's being logged somewhere. And to log it, it's being captured, it's being kept, uh, it may be archived, and that's what we're going to see is more and more of the tiered storage pieces, whether it's, you know, in the old days, you had two tiers, you had disk, you had tape. Now you're, you've got multiple tiers for multiple reasons, anything from performance down to the actual archiving piece of it. So, I think what we're seeing is that explosion. Customers are smarter than ever. And you know, part of it is because the technology, not only is the technology great, but the technology to compare the technology, <laughs> if you want to call it the meta technology, is even, is even better. So you know, we've got the ability to, to look and say, okay, this is what EMC is doing, this is what HDS is doing, this is what IBM is doing. These are three, these, this is the best of each piece. You know, you get a best of breed uh, and then you've got the, you know, the uh, consultants who do a great job of putting that out. I mean, in the old days, think about it. We used to read consumer reports and we used to decide what we're going to buy. Right, right. Now there are 42 different uh, ways of getting that same information. So I think 
yes, the, the data is exploding and customers are doing a better and better job of managing it. Uh, and we're going to just see that continue to grow. And are you being able to stay ahead of their planning cycle and their planning God, curve sure as, the, so. as the curve is really starting to, uh, to accelerate? Uh, I'd like to like, think so. Like, Bob, you we were just here last, last week. We're now, you know, I'm running out of capacity in this. In this we thing. do, trust me, we think we do a good job of, of keeping ahead of the curve, but we do get calls. In fact, we just got a call last week with, hey, need a, a disc pack, it needs to be shipped before I can cut you a PO or else you know, my business is going down. Um, so we, we do get those emergency calls because there's no way you can, you can truly plan at all times for the amount of data that, you know, that we're seeing growing. Um, and the capacity on demand ability probably has not yet you know, caught up to what customers are doing. And, and that's, you know, that's another topic. How do, we, how do we address that capacity on demand? Well, yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about what your customers are doing with cloud and public cloud specifically how you guys are responding as an organization and how your customers are responding? Uh, you know, I think it varies not only from customer to customer, what they're doing cloud-wise, but within the customer based on applications. And, and you know, here's, here's the, uh, the real key to it is, everybody's got a slightly diff different definition of what cloud computing is. Uh, my favorite is one of the guys I work with uh, says cloud is a nebulous term. And it really is. Uh, we've, <laughs> As right? opposed to a cumulus term. Yeah, like right. <laughs> you don't want to get rained on. Um, but, you know, cloud computing uh, can mean various things to various customers. What we find is, you know, the best, we've got like a set of products that we recommend based on what kind of cloud computing they're doing. Um, or, you know, they may go to a third party and actually take it all off site. A lot of customers are creating their own clouds within their their enterprises, uh, as opposed to going out to an Amazon or somebody like that. Um, what we find is some of the smaller companies are going out to the Amazons of the world. We deal with a lot of enterprise customers. Uh, so we, we do a lot of you know, cloud consulting kind of thing. Bob, I got to ask you, is there loyalty in the channel? You talked about you know, a former IBMer, so you've got some connection points, but generally speaking, is, the, is there loyalty in the channel to any specific vendor? I think so. I, well, I, and, and what creates that loyalty? I think it's a comfort level. It's a, uh, it's it's knowing that you're going to get a response in a timely fashion from from the the partners you deal with, and but it works both ways. I mean, the loyalty not only comes and, and I'll use IBM as an example. I believe we're very loyal to IBM, but at the same time, IBM needs to be loyal to us. And we, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, we've got 125 reps throughout the country. We have little pockets that are more loyal than others and it's because the local account teams may or may not work really well with our teams. If they work well, there's a tremendous sense of loyalty. If they don't work well together or new people come in, it may take time to establish that loyalty again. So, but I believe it exists. Last question. Um, you give feedback to IBM, obviously. What are you telling them? What, what, what can they do to make your life better and make your customers' lives better? I think there's a couple things. One. I think they get a bad rap in, uh, in their product line. And what I mean by that is, everyone talks about EMC and everybody talks about some of the other partners. I think IBM's product line is incredibly strong. You, let, you, know, you have the best mainframe attached product in the DS8. You have what I think is the best mid-range product in the V7000, especially after the announcement. You cer certainly have the best flash product right now. Um, I, I think my message to IBM would be, market your own products a little bit better. Step forward, get out in front of it. You, you've got other companies that you know, have equal or inferior products that do a better job of selling themselves. And that's what IBM needs to do is they need to sell themselves at a more enterprise global level and be thought of as a storage company. They're thought of as a great technology company, they're thought of as a great company, but they're not thought of as a storage company. Well, and I think, I mean, I, I would add, I think IBM obviously does a lot of R&D, but, but for, for the last decade, some of that stuff would hit the product portfolio, but it was intermittent, and now, right. what you're seeing at this edge, and I made this statement at the top of the edge, unlike other edges, you're seeing a full portfolio refresh, which has got to have you excited. Absolutely. Um, and, and previous you know, edges, you saw bits and pieces, new, you know, new messaging, but this is a really hard-hitting session of announcements, so I think that 
I think maybe something's happening internally at IBM, or maybe your message is getting through, but more of this, yeah, more, like, if it's good, I'll take credit. Yeah, there you yes. go. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, for making that happen. You heard more it here seems to be hitting the product portfolio, and that's critical in this competitive world. Bob Elliott, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It was a pleasure having you. My Good pleasure. Luck My pleasure. All right, thanks, keep guys. it right there, everybody. The Cube will be right back with our next guest. We're live from IBM Edge in Las Vegas.